so that's the end zero. So that one. When life's realities with some perspectives, vain jewel be chains cross, if she glows with rising energy and open throws, the golden gates of genius she achieves, as her climb delighted and receives. Those gay paths decked with fawnless rose, blessed compensations, low of all the bros. Low is the false word and the fine spirit grieves. No more young hope tints with a lighter bloom, a darkening scene. When the host saves, we say, Come, bright imagination, come, will you, by a ruined lamp with recompensing ray, shine on the mind and pierce its gathering gloom with all the fire of an electric day. So that, too, the future and its gifts alone be prized. Few joys of present brings, and woes alloyed, respected fullness leaves an achieving void. But hope stands by and lifts her sunny eyes, but gild the days to come. She still relies, her phantom happiness not thus shall glide, always from life, alas, yet ill betide. Horse does experience when she coldly tries, in distant roses, to discern the throne. Ah! Is it wise to anticipate our pain? A rife and when is so enough to mourn. Or call the dear console our faults and way, when yet again, shining through April tears, those fair enlightened eyes beam on advanced years. Sonnet 3. Witnet Buxton in a rainy season. From these wild highs, where off a mist descend, and rains which shroud the sun and chill the gale. Each transient gleaming in her well we hail, and roof her naked valleys and extend, our gaze around, where yon vast mountains blend. Billowy clouds will o'er we assume its sail, pondering how little nature's charms befriend, the very seeing, monotonous and pale. Yet solemn will the darkening shadows fleet, succeed of our wide and silent hills, gilded by watery sunbeams when we met, by colia poem of vision. Fancy frills and owns, there's no scene so rude and bare, but nature sheds a grace of Gwendo wear. Sonnet 4. To Honora Snape, whose health was always best in winter. And now the youthful, a capricious spring, piercing her showery clouds with crystal light, and with her hues reflected shrieking bright, her radiant bow finds all her raving sing, a lark shrill caroling on soaring wing, the lonely thrush and break of blossoms white that hewns his pipe so loud, while from the side, coy bending the dropped heads, young cowslips filling, which perfumed over the fields. It is a prime of ours that beauty robes, yet all we killed, cheer, and delight in this with fragrant time. For thy dear sake, to me this pleasure yield, when, wailed in sleet and rain and her rhyme, dying winter snake hatch and pleasure feel. Sonnet 5. To a friend, who thinks sensibility a misfortune. Ah, thankless, canst thou envy him who gains, with stoic cold and indirect repose, woe with a lively sense of bliss and woes, from a false balance of life's joys and pains, or damnest him happy, placed mid the domains, before the river down the valley flows, as wisely mightst, or wish where home I rose on the parched surface of unwatered plains. For wet, when long the heavy rain descends, burst over garden banks where whelming tide, seldom the wild and wasteful flood extends, but spreading plenty, murder beauty wide, the cool translucent stream a pure bends, and laughs a wail as the bright water glide. Sonnet 6. Written at Litchfield, in an eastern apartment of a bishop's palace, which commands a view of Stowe Valley. In this chill morning of a winter spring, I look into the gloom and rainy yay. The sullen clouds, the stormy winds assail, law on the fields, and with impetuous wing, disturb will lake. A laugh and memory cling to a known scene in this cloud influence pale, yet prized as when it blooms in summer's gale, think by his setting sun, when sorrows fling or slow disease, was so some beauteous form, where shadowy longus form the oldest dear, as fine to me, or now with more warm and anxious gaze, the eyes of love scenery, bend on the charms, 
Diamond with time that snow. Wind, wind with elves vermin in hue way glow. Sonnet 7. A Durban's rapid stream is oft I straight. With fancy's light, step and glazed wide. And saw waste rocks on steady mountains pilled. From all the umbrous glen are plashed so wide. The cloud moonshine in the shadowy glade, romantic nature to his enthusiastic child, grew dear for when one silver the smile, in uncontrasted loveliness arrayed, but oh, in every scene with scared sway, a quaze fire me of a bloom which spreads, resplendent in the lucid morn of May, through green light but in a glow warm sheds, on mossy banks when midnight glooms prevail. And softest silence broads over all the day. Sonnet 8 Short is the time the oldest being lives, nor has long variety one hour to waste. Life's duties are proportioned to the haste with which it flees away. Each day receives its taste that if negotiated surely gives. The more do we toil, ye who have passed, neither sport or days that fled too fast. Days with no grief records, no care retrieves, at length be wise and think whether the part remaining in the vital period given, or short the date and the perspective to start, ere to the extremest verge your steps be driven. Not at a moment unimproved depart, but view it as the latest trust of heaven. Sonnet 9. Seek not, unless bear, the scurious day, or be a woe to its shades a tranquil heart. Since wrinkles most in solitude, the smart of injured charms and talents will have fail to meet the due regard, nor e'en prevail. Where most we wish to please, yet since by part is large in life's chief blessings by desert sullen the world, alas, how many wail, dire loss of the best comforts heaven can grant, but wave a bitter tear in secret power, smoked by the death of friends, disease or want, Slight wrong in why self volume so deplore, though but resemblest in my lonely haunt, a scissors pinning on the watery shore. Sonnet 10. Honor, shall the cruel time arrive, when gainst my truth will shoulders my arrows pause, scorning remembrance of our vanished joys, when for the love form looks in which I live, but cold respect might greet me. A true gift, no tender glance, no kind regretful sight, nor shall pass me with arrogant eyes, feigning or cease me not to sting and gripe, and sink my sad heart, I could not bear such dire eclipse of my solely chain race. I could not learn my struggling heart to tear, or my love form, but throw my memory strays, nor on the pale horizon of despair, endure the wintry and the darkened days. Sonnet eleven How oh, sweet roof. From summer sunbeams bathe in gloomy dingles, or to trace the tide of wandering brooks where parallel beds that shine, to feel the west wind cool refreshment yield, with comes soft creeping of flowery field, and shadowed waters and rose bushy side, the mountain bees their fragrant treasure hide, murmuring and sings the lonely trash conquered, when ceremony and the gilded hordes, where forced the frivolous it themes arise. With bow and smile unmeaning, how hope hails and we vine my sense. How oft it sight for leisure, wood lanes, dales, and waterfalls, and felt the untempered heart of sultry skis. Sonnet 12. Chilled by unkind honora's altered eye, a drops my heart with fruitless woes forlorn, thankless for much of good, with thousands born to keyless toil beneath this wintry sky. Or to brave death for oceans surging high, or fear disease feathered rage to mourn, or bless the whim would seem my destiny, or oh dear the comforts my wish so scorn. Affection is repeat by causeless hate, a blighted love is changed to call disdain. It suffer not the wrongs to show their fate, but turn my soul to blessings which remain, and let us truth the wise resolve create, the heart is strength. No anguish can regain. Sonnet 13. For child of night and silence, a balmy sleep, she the soft poppies in the aging blow, and charm to rest the force of winds, or how vanished with price affection, won't to keep. Each grief of mine, a 
ringing it awoke, when stern misfortune from a bended bow loosed the dire strings and care and anxious street, of which yet hard on sullen pinion fled. But now the spell dissolved, the anchor drift gone, ceaseless was cruel fines infest my day, and sunny hours but light them to the prey, when welcome midnight shades, when my wished moon may in oblivious dews on my eyelids steep, or child of night and silence while we sleep. Sonnet 40 Ingratitude, how deadly is my smart, proceeding from the form we fondly love, how light compared all our sorrows prove, or sheets of night of woe, or whence depart, my gentle beams of patience, and my heart, let lesser's ills assume. My victim's roof, unquiet as the ghost that haunts the grove, where murders paid the life blood, or my dart kills more than life, heed all that makes life dear, till we, the sensible of pain, would change for frenzy that defies the bitter tear, or wish in kindred colonists to range, where moon aid with your sea, a fallen lip, drag or loose knee, an intermitting step. Sonnet 15 The evening shines, and May's luxuriant pride, and all the sunny hills at distance glow, and all the brooks that flowed the valley flow seemed liquid gold. How oh, had my fate denied leisure and power to taste the sweets with light, who walk and minds as the soft seasons go, and where still varying progress for my woe, my heart has felt or balm had mean supply. But where quaint nature smiles as here she smiles, adverdant whales in gently swelling hills, glassy lakes and mazy murmuring reds, and now what wild lanes a spell begirts, with an impatient sight of grief, reconscious, poetic minds of live, with all her ills. Sonnet 16. Apollo, it is clothed at last, tired of what tears, of what tried at his throne, and to lose words, assume in lofty tone the poet's name, untaught and uninspired, indignant struck the lyre. Straight it acquired new powers and complicate, when first was known the Rose sonnet to be framed alone, by Dutius Bards, or by just taste admired. Go, a nergic sonnet, go, he cried, and be the test of skill, a rhymes that flow regardless of the rules, a destined guide. Yet take thy name, ah, let the boats us know, where strict sway and jealous laws preside, while I no rests on river verse bestow. Sonnet 17. Ah, why have I indulged my distant sight, with scenes and hopes delusive mirror shown, scenes where too seldom human life is known and kind accomplished? But oh, how bright were rays that gilded when the varied light, the turned of swift flashing on the boon, that might at fame's immortal shrine be worn, when shining soft on tender love's delight, of stern hand fate draws the several way, and for free glass. Hope, as she turns away, the darkened crystal drops, heavy and pale, rain pouring clouds quench all the darts of day. Long mourns the wind alone with a gloomy dale, and holds the death bell in the posing gale. Sonnet 18. An evening in November, which had been stormy, gradually cleared up in a mountainous country, cheesed as a rain, but heavy drops yet fall over drenched roof. It murmurs with sunk wind, and rolling with dim hills, and yet a passage find. Whistling through yon cleft wreck and ruined wall, the swollen and angry horns heard a pale or distant. A few stars, emerging kind, shed where of green trembling beams, with a lustrous small, the moon her swiftly pacing clouds behind, gilded over the shaded hill. No blast removed, or shadowing clouds, and on the mountain's brow, full orb she shines, half sunk within its cove, half the long bow with gulfing sound. And lo, bright rolls the setting lake and brimming roof, waves blue rills, and glittering as they flow. Sonnet 19 Farewell, false friend, all scenes of kindness close. To cordial looks, the sunny smiles farewell, to sweet consolings which can grief expel, every joy soft sympathy bestows. For all her looks, the truth no longer glows, or haste prepared my heart, and it was well to buy the bent and lock for story tell. Falls it awoke, but shamed, no sorrow knows. Oh, when we met, to met, but this time try, to void it as foe mates on either bro, none the stealing consciousness of eye, 
be seen the slightest trace of what or how we once were to each other, nor one side fled of a weak regard a broke woe. Sonnet 20 Ah, might arrange each hollowed bow and glade, muses cultured many raptured sigh, what would dear lock conscience supply? Benefice willow in a grow to shape, whose rufous hand with oars and shells inlaid, O sweet watch, with free revival eye, for the spray and arc, the streams he oft survived, thin blue phases gently wandering by. This is the poet's triumph and its towers. Our life's pale ills is consciousness of power, that lift his memory from oblivion's gloom, secure train of his heart thrilling hours by his idea decked in rapturous bloom. For spirits rightly touched through ages yet to come. Sonnet 21 Proud of our lyric galaxy, I heard of faded genius with supreme disdain, as when we see the mist bent insane, or his full coffers and an accent drear, deplored imagined want and was appear. To me, those moody senses who complain, a Shaftesbury plained in the now boasted rain. The poesy had left our darkened sphere, whence may the present stupid dream be traced. But now she shines, not as in days foregone, but chains neglished, often shine in a waste her lights, from number into confluence run, more than when finally in my horizon place, each orb shone separate and appeared a sun. Sonnet 22 You, whose dull spirits feel not the fine glow, enthusiasm breathes no more of light, Perceives the end wrapped poesy or bright, and fancies richest colouring and can flow from jewel treasures in the central night of her deep caves. You have no sun to show, the inborn radiance pour you, goes and alas go, nor your defects of feelings and of sight to charge upon the poet was presume. Ye lightness minds, whatever of title proud, scholar or sake or critic ye assume, arranging his high claims with sender loud, or silky scorn, yours, yours is all the cloud. Games cannot sparkle in the midnight glow. Sonnet 23. Do I not tell the surely winter's flown, with the brook's virtuous green, and bite thee here in an igorous wail, the blackbird clear, at measured intervals with mellow tone, crying the hours of prime? And call mine ear to the gay while dining in the day with table load and bagpipes rustic drone to every shriver's dance or yes to tale. From festal board, from coral roofs the song and speak of the mask of pig and to beguile. The caustic memory of cruel wrong. Thy lips acknowledgement with the generous while and bite me still the effort kind prolong. But ah, we were a cold and joyless smile. Sonnet 24. Behold the day an image of a year. A year can image of our life short span. Morn like a spring with groaning light began. Spring like our youth with joy and beauty fair. And picturing summer, summer's art sphere, manhood's gay portrayed. Eve like autumn, one autumn resembling fate ancient man. Night with its silence and its darkness drear, emblem of winter's floor and gloomy rain. When Topide lies like a devil's powers, Winter, so shrunk, so cold, reminds us plain of a mute grave, but over the dying course alone, there shall very rest our own remain to the pale slumber of life's checkered hours. Sonnet 25 Fortunate whale, exulting hill, dear plain, where morn and eve my soul's flare idle straight, while all your winds but murmured through the glade, stole her sweet breath, yet Yet your paths retain, prints of a step I found whose floods remain, and debt unfounded, my rocks that shade with cavern arc my sleep. Your streams as played around her limbs in summer ardent rain, the soft resplendence of those azure eyes, think you with living light, and white claim these blessed distinctions give, I lie on my sight, my songs record. And, for the poet's flame, bite with wild yale, its rocks and streams arise, associate still of a bright mistress fame. Sonnet 26 O partial memory, years that fled too fast, when we in morn the prison's beauty arise, forgotten all the transient tears and sights, somewhat but dim their brightness. O haste chased each hovering mist from the south suns that graced our fresh gay morn of youth. The heart's high price, Friendship and all the charmed us in vice of yet unuttered love. So pleasures past, when my crystal prism was glow sublime, 
beam on the gloomed and disappointed mind. When youth and health have a chilled grasp of time, shudder and fate, and guide press but we find, O oh, wind life's blighted roses to supply, while but reflected shine the golden lights of joy. Sonnet 27 See, the third winter, bending low his head, his wake looks stiff of hoary dew, his eyes like frozen lakes of livid hue, his strain a semi cloud with murky red, strict, ah, behold his nitrous breathing shred, a terrific death. Lean, wailful birds pursue, on airs he swept over the dun lonely moor, amid the battling blast of all the winds. But while the sleet the climbing sailor blinds, lash a white surge to the sounding shore. So comes war, winter, finally to doom. The sinking year and the fair ice dropped sperry, should press and you and garlage a pale tomb, her vanished hopes and a departure days. Sonnet 28 O oh, genius, does the sun resembling beam to the internal eyes of man display in clear prospect a momentous way what leads to peace? Do we not rather seem dazzled by lustrous and continual stream till the night we find in such excessive day? Art thou not prone with too intense array to gild the hope improbable, the dream of fancied good, or by the side upbraid, imaginary evils? and involve all real sorrow in a darker shade to found credulity to rash resolve those though not prompt to reason's scared aid and fair description in a fire dissolve sonnet twenty nine if genius has its danger grief and pain but common sense escapes it who would change the powers from nature and through art would range to keep the bounded for more safe domain of moderate intellect where all we gain is cold approvals. How sweet, the strange, soft and sublime, and vivid interchange. How no glad the spirit, no enrich the brain. Destructive shall we deem your noon tight place, if transiently the eye overpowered resign, distinct perception. Shall we raver praise the moon when light? If the owner's choice incline, with common sense a lunar lamp should grace, when that the solar fires of genius shine. Sonnet 30 that song again, that sounds my bosom thrill, brief of past years to all her joys delight, and as the notes from my scoff spirits glide, dear recollections, choice sweets distill, soft as a morn calm, dew on yonder hill, and slants the sun upon its crazy side, tanging the brooks that many a meat divide, with lines of gilded light, and blue and still, the distant lake stands gleaming in the veil. Sing yet once more at will remembered strain, which of made vocal every passing gale, and days long fled, and pleasure's golden reign, the youth of change to honor. Now it was her air, her smile, spells of a vanished years. Sonnet thirty one. How oh, ever dear, the precious vital powers sing rapidly. The long and dreary night brings scarc on hope, but morn returns light, to dawn for we. In such terrific hours, when hearing fondness airily divorce, each moment of protective life is flight, who rashly chosen of thy heart has ta'en, but dances, songs, and fear does invite, experiencing sweetness of evening and pain. I see him in the scenes, the laughing light, pleasures like forms, sees eyes gaily glow, regardless of her life fast dividing time. I hear him, who should droop and silent woe, declaim on actors and on tasty side. Sonnet 32. Behold him now his genuine colors were, with specious false one, by whose cruel wiles I lost my empty. So I dear smiles, eclipsed those smiles that asked my heart to cheer, waked of grateful sense of many a year, when rose by youth, by friendship pleasure toils, cultured by dying, oh, forever fate, the angry fires, each fought that might upbraid, the broken faith which yet my sound deplores. Now as eternal is past and gone, and as the interest of many hours, days, years we share together. May I flaw, yet long must I lament my hapless doom, my lavish life and early hasted tomb. Sonnet 33 Last night, her form by hours of summer bliss, was eyes illuminated all my youthful years. Spirit of dreams, and why command could pierce, each airy shape a visiting our rest, dismays, perplexes, or delights the breast. Pensive heart, this kind indulgent cheers, bliss in a waking moment now possessed, bliss ask of thee with memory's thrilling tears. Nightly I cry, oft, alas, 
in a way. Give I the powers that every shapes control, and now out of my visions, I ordain a virtuous lip may wear a smile that still, and years long fled, the sting from every pain, shower sweet face, are showered to my soul. Sonnet 34 When death or adverse fortune's ruthless gale, tears our best hopes away, the wounded heart, exhausted, leans on all that can impart, the charm of sympathy, a mutual wail, how sure Never can her warm tears fail to balm our bleeding griefs severest smart. The holy wing in fate pities solemn art. While we should penetrate his heavy way, concerning, known to be assumed our pains, respecting, kind of welcome, far cruise, and cold neglected, or mirth at grief or faints. Thus each faint glow warm at the night conspires, gleaming along the most and dark net lands to cheer the gloom with her unreal fires. Sonnet 35 in April's gilded morn, when south winds blow, and little shake the hawthorn silver chrome, wafting its skin the forest glade adorn, the wealthy shelter of a bounding doe, when, under trees, soft tufts of primrose show a pallid yellowing of flowers. To the moist sun, blue harder beds peep, while cold lips stands unblown, plighted to repair May, and lavish flow, a lark's like loud carols in the wilds of air. Oh, not for nature's glad, enthusiastic cling, a verge and pride, Though her no blooming sphere charmed as he rose, his thoughts in raptured spring to him who gives free man's appointed time these chilling hours of promise and of prime. Sonnet thirty six. No one hills, rocks and streams, and rails and plains, for look with shining day. Our gardens were the gorgeous robes of a consummated year. With laugh and shout and song stood maids and swain. Heap high the fragrant hay, as through of lanes rings the yet empty wagon. See in air the pendant cherries, where the tempting stains gleam road bows. Summer my bright career, my slaking soon in autumn's milder sway. When wine or hept and jocose meats shall stand, smooth the cant, silent, through exulting land, as wave her rival golden fields and gay, a reaper's throng. She smiles and binds the sheaves, and bend her parting step of fallen and rustling leaves. Sonnet 37 For changing months, a well-attempted mind welcomes a gentle or terrific pace. When our retreating autumn's golden grace timbers to winter spreads and heavy wind, in ache disparity or musing find, grander increasing as the glooms effect variety and glow. Each solemn trace exhales the thoughts of central joys refined, and blended in our rapt ideas rise, when its charms with summer suns reveal, if worn of desolation with no lies, ray before us. Teach thy soul to feel all the present pleasure in the past, and to see vernal morns in hope's perspective cast. Sonnet 38 If he whose bosom with no transport swells, and vernal airs and hours commits the crime of solace to nature against the time, and its great ruler he alike rebels, whose seriousness and pious dread repeals, and all his gaze on the faded climb, dime in the gloom and pale and horror rhyme, and of the beak and very prospect steals, spring claims our tender, grateful, gay delight, winter our sympathy and scattered fear. And show the heart's pain or pity's right, a wild calamity, but careless here. Creations wear neglected, admit her blight, a solemn lesson of a ruined year. Sonnet 39. When morn, the dark winds of the lonely plain, and from pale noon sings a fifth cold hour, that transcend light, make a nation's power with knowledge and the science and a train, not unproportioned high in ice rain. Perceive sense of the deep and silent lore, I themes of rapt concerning thoughts explore, free from external pleasures glittering chain, and most for understanding's culture pace, which soon and harvest, nor shall folly bring a hate obtrusive. When, with ardent gaze, beneath through each rich resources spring, while sullen winter's dull and prisoning days hang on the vacant minds the flagging wing. Sonnet 40. I love to rise, a gleams, a tardy light. Winter's pall dawn. And as warm fires illume, and cheerful tapers shine around the room, from misty windows bend my musing sight, where round the dusky lawn, the mansions white, the shutters closed, peer faintly through the gloom, but slow descenders, while on grey spirits assume, rising from the dark pile, and added high by indistinctness given. When to decree the grateful thoughts to God, all by unfold, to friendship 
more than muse, or seek with glee wisdom's rich page, more hours, more worth than gold, by whose blessed use we lengthened life, and free from dear decays of age, outlive the old. Sonnet 41 Since dark December shrouded with transient day, and stormy winds are howling in their ire, why comes not foe who always can't inspire, the soul of cheerfulness and best array, a sudden hour in smites? How haste to pay, who call the wizard's sudden hours require, I want the circling walls of glowing fire. Shines, but it vainly shines in this delay to blend by spirits warm from feet and light. Come when it signs and it friendships call, where the old despiker come for way in white. The social powers without we languish all. Come when I may not hear the winds of night, nor count the heavy drops as before. Sonnet 42 Lo, the year's final day. Nature performs its obsequies with darkness, wind, and rain. But man is jocose, hark like silent strain. From towers and stepless drones, a wintry storms. Now will it spire out of the cold and farms, white merrily its scanned and tuneless peal. Ranks round, ah, joy ungrateful, mirth and sane. Wherefore the senses trip, ye who fear, this annual portion of brief life a while depart forever. Brought it no dear hours, or health and night rest. None will saw of a smile on lips beloved. Oh, with her gentle powers, where the next pass ye pause, yet careless here, strike these last clocks that knelt expiring year. Sonnet 43 My memory, long accustomed to receive, in deep engraven lines, each varying trait, past times and seasons war can find no day through many years. Oh, May, and no hadest leaf, as snow of a great sun, serene to wreathe, with fragrant chapels and poetic state, to call the joker's hours and we to wait. Bringing each day at morn, at noon, at eve, is my illuminations. Nymph no more is fine to mourn, bend of a scanty shade of half-blown foliage, showing to deplore, by garlands and measure, by writing and paint. Weeds drop with gold again to where below, soft gates, luxuriant blowers, and woodland song. Sonnet 44 Rapt contemplation bring waking dreams to his umbrellous wail at noontime hour. While full of I seems every bending flower, whose petal tremble over the shadowed streams, mm. give her no image when her beams, youth, beauty, kindness shone, or time she wore with smile of gentle yet resistantless power, to soothe each painful passion's wide extremes, or show now empty vain and true chase of idle converse or enchantment warm, that rings in all its interest, all its grace, a dear, persuasive visionary form. Can real life a rival blessing boast, nor canst thus restore or nor early lost? Sonnet 45 From possibility's time, chaos sprang, I o'er its gloom, veritic power. Arose, exulting nations, hail the hour. Magnific boast of science, loud we sung, a victory over the element that hung, pressing the earth for beings who know so, peril heights. But wisdom by it explores, this wounded skill, if tides of air among, we know to steer our bark. Her science finds, her buoyant hopes burst like the bubble wane. Type of his art gilded, if still she blights. The sense of fear persists the flame to fan. Skywarding pride, but to the owner's winds, froze for an idle show, the life of man. Sonnet 46 Dark as the silent stream, beneath the night, a funeral glides to life's eternal home, child of its narrow house. How late the bloom, a facial smile, the soft ice crystal light, each grace of youth's gay morn, the charms of sight, played over that form, nor sunk in death's cold gloom, incense days, ghastly, for the yawning tomb. Alas, fit inmate, was we mourn the blight of virgin beauty and endowments rare, in the glad hours of promise. Oh, when age drops, like the o'erblown, faded rose, oh dear, it's long non worth, no stormy soul's rage. But swell when we behold it and soiled by time. Youth's broken lily perished in its prime. Sonnet 47. Of error often see a bard explore the central caverns of a mournless night, where never muse performed her minious rite till now, and lo, upon the very floor, at once to welcome him each sister power. Petra, stern queen, Fusilia, called bride, and call the gnomes to marshal in his sight. The drift encrust and the veined ore and flashing gem, 
when, while his songs portray the mystic virtues golden games acquire with every charm that mineral scenes display. The imperial sisters praise the daring lyre, and grateful hail its new and powerful lay that seats them high aim the muses' choir. Sonnet 48 Now young I'd spring on gentle breeze born, mid the deep woodlands, hills, and wales, and bowers, and folds her leaves, her blossoms, and her flowers, pouring with soft luxuriant on the morn. Oh, how unlike were mirrored, then forlorn, and limping winter, but our rusted moors, grey ricky fields, and ice-encrusted shores strays, and commands his rising winds to mourn, protracted life, though art, orden to her, a form like his, and shout the gifts be mine. I tremble least a kindred influence drear steal on my mind, I pray you hope enough, the soul's bright day spring shall it worth with fear, and guilt existence and a dim decline. Sonnet 49 While the fawn's pride and narrow jealousy numbers reject each new expression, one be changed from language richer than our own, out of glad welcome may the poet see, extension's golden vantage. Decree each way exclusive, scorn and re enthroned, the obsolete if strength or gaze of tone, or imaginary awaited with the free and liberal daring of a critic train whose eyes zero our verbal stores review. At the firm bond require what we explain, a cause of censor and the balance true, waited but smile at the objection wane and sickly spirits hating for we do. Sonnet 50. And every breast affection fires, where dwells a secret consciousness to what degree, where himself be loved. We hourly see the involuntary proof that either quells or ought to quell false hopes, or sets us free from pain distrust. But over misery, weak self delusion, time de repeals, the lights obtrusive, shrinks from all the tales, unwelcome truths, and vainly really seeks repose. For startled founders, in the obtained balm of kind profession, or change its flows to hush complaint. How in belief's clear calm, or mid the lurid clouds of doubt, refined, love rise the sun, or comet of a mind. Sonnet 51 How comes to youth, gliding through azure skis, with a merlin crown, her full robes, snowy white, floats on the gale, no exulting sight marks its affair. On waning life she flies, wrapped in a mist, covering her starry eyes with a fair hand. But now, in floods of light, she meets thee, Sylvia, and of gallant sprite, as lucid streams, when spring's clear mornings rise, from human's kindling torch, a yellow ray, the shining texture of our spotless west. Gilts, and the month that gives the early day, the scant obdurus, and the carol blessed, pride of a rising year, and armed, May, paints its redolent folds with floridy gay. Sonnet 52 Long as the pall of midnight quenched the scene and ripped the hushed horizon, all around in scattered huts, labor in sleep profound, lies stretched and rosy innocent serene slumbers, but creeps with pale and starting mind, a nighting superstition. Fancy found by late self slaughtered man in earth yet green and westering, bursts from his uncombed mound, roams. And the slave of terror thinks he hears, and muttered groan, sees the sunk eye that glares as shouts the metro. But no more forlorn he strays, the spectre sinks into his tomb. For now the joyous herald of a morn claps his bowed wings and sounds along the gloom. Sonnet 53 The knell of whiter tones, his cares are past, the hapless tribute of his purchased lace, a several as Egyptian task of praise. If not supply with strains, fame justly placed, where power above her work. Now with white gaze of much Indian wonder, she surveys to a life laboring or a studious haste, a glowing bard, by every muse embraced. A warden, chosen prized of firmest craw, shall a rapt song be well, him the throne, whether its edicts just applause inspire, or patriot virtue view them with a throne, what needs for this the golden stringed lyre, the snowy tunic, and the sunbright zoo? Sonnet 54 Guard all, my son, the helpless and the poor, on the chains of fine own indolence. Slumber and await while the joys of sense engross thee, and though sayst, I ask no more. Wise man, the shepherd's slumber will deplore, and ribious wolf has slept your vents, and ranges through the foe. My son dispense those laws, but justice to the wrong restore. 
The common weal should be the first pursuit of a crowned warrior for the royal bruce, the people first in rift. We have the root, the king the tree, a lofty spread the sports glorious, but learn in piteous youth as length trees of root alone derive their strength. Sonnet 55 Loud blue will gnaw through able pallid days, nor dress the field, nor leaves the groove of pains, nor crystal sunbeams, nor the gilded rains that bless the hours of promise, gentle rays, warmth of the blood, the fountain fire blaze, which makes it boil long with throbbing veins. Albiden displeached her own loved springs away, passing with fallen step a rusted plains. Cease here to summer's fierce embraces speed, pale and unrobed, faithless, for well mixed height, close in a sultry breast, a recent head, adduced, neglected of the distinguished isle, in winter's ice arms so long abide, a Briton vainly languished for the smile. Sonnet 56 What bashful wildness in those crystal eyes, Versilia, ah, more dear to laugh a gaze that dwells upon its object and the race of a rage glance quick as in summer skis the lightning's lemon flash when neither rise thunder nor storm i mark while transport place warm in the lover's eye what we betrays my throbbing heart yet why from the soft sides fleets though to swift away like the young hind the bending stands the fountain's prime beside when, with a sudden guest, the western wind rustles among the boards that shape the tide. See from the stream, anxious and banning, starting she bounds with terror rain as fine. Sonnet 57 In the chill silence of a winter eve, for Lickfield's darkened streets I bend my way, by wet, sad mansion where narrow clay awaits the morning knell, and I perceive in the late bridal chamber the clear ray of numerous lights, and over the ceiling stray shadows of those who frequent past Benef, robe pale dead. What sounds my senses grief, for now the busy hammer struck a pales, red and red note of preparation forts closing the sable lid, with sides I bear these solemn warnings from the house of foes. Pounding how late for young and near, where joyous the laugh in your morn arose. Sonnet 58. Of the slow years, where not the sable plumes, a pagan statue bending over the room, a dark robe floating, a dejection worn on the drooped eye, and let no smile illumes. Not all this pomp of sorrow that presumes it pays affection stepped in due concern, to the forever absent, to it mourn, fashions a lot in time. If time consumes, while life is ours, the precious vestal flame, memory should hourly feed, and for each day she will forward we see, hear, think, or say, blend not the image of a vanished flame. How can the alien heart expect to prove, in words of light and life, a reunite laugh? Sonnet 59 Lady, each soft effusion of a mind, flowing through the free pen, Shows we endued with taste so just for all of wise and good, as bites me how the spirit does not fight. Young as thou art, with solitude combined, a wish of change, but irksome lassitude, which often through unremitted days obtrude on youth's fresh bosom, dangerously inclined to pant for more than peace. Which volumes yield the soul and owning wealth, beyond ain's these shall consciousness of fidelity duty guilt, the gloomy hours. Where winters to its seas roar round the rocks, and the dark tempest lowers, and mournful the winds roam attic's lonely towers. Sonnet 60 I have used the woe, Edwy, with disdain mean, the little maiden of a downtown wave. High mid rocks, where her clear waters lave, a circling gloomy basin in such a scene. Silent, squested few demand, I ween, the last perfection of fighting chisel gave. Dimly the soft and musing form is seen in the hushed, shelly, shadowy, lone concave. As sleeps a pure or darkling fountain where, a laughter recollector straps the spine upon its moisy brink, with pendant hair as dripping over the flood. Ah, well combined, such gentle graces, modest, pensive fair, to aid the magic of a rate shrine. Sonnet 61 Disciple of a pride, a oinian maid, in my life's blossom, a resistless spell, amid the wide wood, an irregular trail, over oh, from me hell and through the mid glade. 
Lead V for a way out of refs to braid. The flaws were masqueroos and azure bands, not so Lucretian's brook or silent well. Was wood her inspirations were a rapt aid liberal she gave the only through the strain, brief her pure spirit by the charms beguiled the languid hours of sorrow, of pain. But when youth's tide ran high and tempting smiled, serving pleasure, rescuing did she stand, broke the enchantress cup and snapped her wand. Sonnet 62 Dim grooks the vital flame in a steer breast, from whom my life I drew, and thrice had sprang bloomed at fierce winter thrice on darkened wing. Out of the grey waste fields, since he possessed, or strength, or frame, or intellect. And there rang no more, nor eve, his cheerful steps, but pressed the pavement, lake field, and the spirit blessed of social gladness. And there failed and cling, feeble to the fixed chair, no more to rise, elastic arm. My heart forebodes that soon the full of days shall sleep. No spring's soft sights, no winter's blast awaking him, begun to twilight. Night is long, but ours his eyes, life every slumbers, wave the pale lids down. Sonnet 63 The genius, Colebrook, faithless to his charge, admit the woods and whales, the rocks and streams, form from a train with horns poetic dreams, maidens and nymphs. Nor hears the toiling barge, and the sword, kyplops ever clanging fog, dying in the dales. Amidst the dark red gleams, from umbered fires on all the hills, the beams, solar and pew, to shroud with columns large of black sulphurous smoke, that spread the veils, like funeral crape upon the silver rope of romantic rocks. All over the gates, it stained the glassy floods, while over the globe, to spread the stores metallic, with rude year drones, the wild woodland song, and breaks poetic spell. Sonnet 64 Praised be the poet, over sonnets claim. Zeros of the orders that belong, distinct and separate of the Delphic song, shall venetrate, nor its appropriate name, lawless as you. Urculia is its frame, from him derived, who stunned the city throng, and revered sweet rocks and streams among, lonely the closer. And that he of fame, a greater Milton, heave by many a lay formed on the orders model, fully shown that English verse may heavily display was strict in energic measures which alone deserve the name of sonnet and convey a grander grace and spirit all their own. Sonnet 65. My callous, since the hours of my strain, to the young eyes and kindly fancy, gleam with somewhat of a vivid hues that stream for posy bright orb. Each endless strain, she by dull critics, men and vexed and vain, seems recompensed at full, and so would seem the major son of Phobus deem my words annoying. Though in time shall gain, like vain, amid the lettered world with sway, which makes inconium fame, so though at dawn extend, refine, and dignify the lay, and indolence, and so her pleasures gone, when at high noon the genius shall display the splendors promised in its shining morn. Sonnet 66. Now which was gone, the gilded veil to whir, soft simulation, wisely to abstain, from fostering envy as to dash the bane. Far from our hearts, which hate the foreign zero, extends for those who wrong us, to rear of soul, or grateful, or resigned to train, or mercy instead of trail, is to gain. A quiet consciousness, best of blessing here, calm consciousness, is a land and circled bay, on whose smooth surface tempers never blow, which shall the reflex of our life display. Unsustained by crime, though gloomed with transient woe, by the bright hopes of heaven's eternal day, upon the fair and silent waters glow. Sonnet 67 Cloud off with Johnson, want poetic ear, fancy or judgment, no, his splendid strain and prose of rhyme confutes with plea. The pain which weft our garrick fortune shows us clear whence all his spleen to genius. I to be a friend's renown, wed to his own must reign, compared Emetrius and Vencan's train, to Jupiter's fixed orb, proves that each sneer, subtle and fatal to poetic sense, did from insidious envy mainly flow, illumed with dazzling hues of eloquence and sophist wit, but labor to our throne, drawns of ages and new laws dispense, that lift the mean and lay the mighty low. Sonnet 68 well, it becomes we, Britain, to avow Johnson's high claims, yet boasting with his fires with unclouded lustre, truth retires, blushing, and justice knights his solemn brown. The eye of gratitude withdraw the glow, the small strain inspired, 
Where zeal requires, but what should better guard the second lies, source of bright fame, than to bestow perfections reft on him, whose ruthless hand, goaded by Jesus' reach, will over its tour, where justice, truth, and gratitude demand, should deck for liar till time should be no more. A radiant cause that Johnson's glory run, but large the spots that darkened on its sun. Sonnet 69 Time and thy charms, all fancies we redeem. Yon all is libertine for root and vice. Misleading thought, has he not paid the price his taste for virtue? Ah, the sensual stream has flown too long. What charms can so entice, what frequent guilt so poor as not to shame? A rash belief, presumptuous and unwise, but crimes habitual will forsake the frame. Thus on the river's bank, in the fable law, rustic stands, sees the stream swiftly go, and thinks he soon shall find the gulf below, a channel dry, which he may safe pass over. Vain hope, it flows and flows, and yet will flow, volume decreaseless to the final hour. Sonnet 70 Yes, thou shalt smile again. Time always heals, in youth the wounds of soul. Oh, survey yon no subsided deep, shall neither prey to roaring winds, and to the furious peers surging tumultus. Yet, as in dismay, the settling billows tremble, morning steals grey on the rocks, and soon, to pour the day, from the strict east the radiant orb unveils, and all is pride of light. Was shall the glow of beauty, health, and hope by soft degrees spread over the breast? This priest, with storms of woe, wake for sweet pleasure sense, the wish to please, till from woe's eyes the wounded lusters flow, bright as the sun on calm and crystal seas. Sonnet 71 While summer roses all a glory yield, to crown the watery of love and joy, misfortune's victim hails with many a sight. We, scarlet poppy of the pathless field, goldy, yet wild and lone, no leaf to shield. The flaccid west, wet as the gale blows high, flaps, and eternal floats round the head. So stands in the long grass a laugh crazed maid, smiling aghast, while stream to every wind her garish ribbons smeared with dust and rain, but bring sick visions, cheat a tortured mind, and bring forth peace. Thus, lying grief and pain, kind dreams oblivious from the Jews proceed, but flimsy, shilly, melancholy weed. Sonnet 72 A hapless tune, circles on Lumia spare, yet the dime hollow, whose cold powers ordain long over these veils should swim in misty train. The poor continuous showers that sullen smear the radiant lyres drawing on the plain. Bend low with revered leaves of clankered stain, the drenched and heavy rose. Yet pledged and dear, fair hope still holds the promise of a year. Suspend her anchor on the silver horn of her next waxing orb, O June the day. Robbed of its golden eve and rosy morn, and gloomy as the winter's rilky sway, the sunless, lingering, disappointing hours, with a song's silent glades and dropping bowers. Zonet 73 He who a tender long loved wife survives, sees himself sundered from the only mind, whose hopes and fears and interests were combined and blended with its own. No more she lives, no more alas. Her deaf numbered ear receives his thoughts, but trace the past, or anxious wind, a future darkling maze. His wish we find to wish the please exist no more, but gives the will its energy, the nerves their tone. He feels the texture of his cry torn and stop the settled course that action drew. Life stands suspended, motionless, till thrown by outward causes into channels new. But in a dread suspense, how sinks the soul forlorn? Sonnet 74 In sultry noon, when youthful maiden lay, supinely stretched beneath the poplar shade, lured by his form, a fair Italian maid steals from a loitering carrier to survey. With slumbering charms that all her soul betray, when, as coy fierce, that Marius gaze upbraid, starts, and with lines with hurried pen portrayed, slides in his half closed hand and speeds away. Ye eyes, ye human stars, if thus conquered by sleep's soft veil, ye agitate my heart. Ah, what had been its conflict if reared? Your race had shown, bright nymph, the strains impart. Hopes that impeal the graceful bard roof, seeking for Tuscan whales his visionary laugh. Sonnet 75. He found her not, yet much the poet found. 
to swell imagination's golden store, and on his bank and on that bloomy shore, wabbling puffin lope and the white bound, where Rome's forlorn companions stretched round her ruins, towers, and temples, classic law breathing slumming spirit from the power of local consciousness. Tries heavy wound and give them by his sleeping graces, as the fair hung over them a mirrored, but a spire, a found result inspired, but winked him rare, where breathed each Roman and each Tuscan liar, might haply fan the emerald flame that rose so dentist song and revealed Maru's fame. Sonnet seventy six. Lo, modern critics amusedly dare, gave a great disport, thrown pompous tone, and messy words were true no meaning down. But while their endless eyes on genius glare, on angstrom's face as it roots through the square, and arrogant entities, a throne lowers on the bow of justice to this own, the kindred malice of its mimic air, spirit of common sense must we endure, in crucitation hard without the gem, finding the anas ring, the widening source, the oaks roof knots on every oyster's steam, the dark contours of visible ear, whose inspirations never met our ear. Sonnet 77. How hasteful seen a vernal morning bright, gem every bank and trembling leaf of dews, tinging the green fields with the amber hues, changing the leading streams to lines of light, when seen dull clouds that shed untimely night, roll inwardly on and every ray suffuse, till the chill senses the early beauty lose, and faint and colourless no more invite the glazing gaze of joy. Twas emblem just of my youth's sun, on which deep shadows fell, spread from the pall of friends, and grief's loud gust, resistless, of both wasted tears compel. Yet let me hope that on my darkened days signs and prayers trust may shed pervading rays. Sonnet 78 Sophia's tempest meet to her social walls, that mid the vase metropolis arise, where splendor dazzles and each pleasure wise and soft allurement and each science calls to philosophic domes, harmonious halls, and asturious galleries, with duteous sights, filet in kind, and with averted eyes, amid the gay temptations as it falls from seduction pain. Here, here I stay, fixed by affection's power, nor entertain one latest wish that might pursue to stray for my egg nursling in his life's divine way, but like the needle by the magnet sway, by constant trembling resistance maintain. Sonnet 79. While unsuspecting trust in all that worse virtue pride semblance stimulates my heart to find its dearest pleasures in the part, taking in others' joys, yielding to theirs its own desires, each latent wish that bears the selfish stem. Oh, let me shun the art, taught by smooth flattery in a courtly mart, where simultaneous studies smile and snares, scorned exterior varnish for the mind. Which, while it polished the manners, wails in showy clothes the soul, e'en thus we find a glass of our whose surface clear the pencil steals, grown less transparent, too, of colours gay, sheds by the darkened and amorous ray. Sonnet 80. As lightens the brown hair to vivid green, a juvenile scant April's showy sun looks on its side with golden glance at noon. So on the gloom of life's now faded scene shines with the image of those days' scenery for memory's consecrated treasures worn. But days with rose, a youth, and years were flown, soft as the morn of May. And well I ween of the head clouds and time's emblemic clear, I vanished all, my gay visions glows in brightness unobscured, and now we were a more than prisoned sunniness, which froze those mild reflected lights that softened care loss of loved friends, and of a train of woes. Sonnet 81 My angel sister, though the lovely form perished in youth's gay morning, yet is mine, this precious ringlet, still with soft hair shine, so glow the nut brown tines, all bright and warm, with sunny glee. Alas, each candle charm, vanished long signs, deep in the silent shrine, withered to shapeless dust, and of her grace memory alone retails the fateful trace. Dear Lock, had the sweet owner lived, and now time on a brow had faded thee, my cares creep from the sun and dew the golden glow. And was her early beauty dost more were, more all of that fair frame my love could save from the resistless ravage of a grave. Sonnet 82 From a ripe tree that stands beside the grave, of a self slaughter to the misty moon, calls the complaining oats a night's pall noon, from a hut 
farm where he drave his herd the angry band dog with loud waves rose and troubled river surged down swan the mountains rains and dimly shone appeals the sense yet see from yonder cave a shade and a recent stormy showers with anxious blow a found expecting maid steals toward the flood alas for now appears a lover's vacant boat the broken oars roll down the tide what images invade aghast the stance the statue of a fierce sonnet eighty three here from laborious art proud towns ye rose here in an instant sunk no aught remains of all ye will on the wide lonely plains not e'en a stone that might these words disclose here stood catania a whose surface shows where this was the rescue alluring rains a trackless desolation dim domains pale mournful strand oft with anxious flows seek i sad relicts which no spot supplies a silence a fixed horror sears my soul rest my foot dear dread doom of human crimes what art thou ye overwhelming cities rise with your terrific skeletons may scold portentous warning took succeeding times sonnet eighty four while on sea leaf the parching autumn gills trembles upon the fine and late spray november dragging on a sunless day lures cold and fallen on the watery fields and nature to her waist dominious yields stripped her last robes with gold and pure purgay so drops my life off your soft beams despoiled youth health and hope that long exciting smiled and the wild curls and the bloomy hues of merry springtime spruce on every plain her half blown brushes moist with sunny rain or pensive thoughts in my sunk heart infuse her winterous gray and desolate domain faded like my lost youth but now bright spring renews sonnet eighty five march the hours of promise with bright ray they gild the noons yet the wild pinion born loud winds more often rudely wake the morn and harshly hem the early closing day still the child's earth wears with a treasure shorn a bleak gray garb yet not for us we mourn nor as in winter's more enduring sway the festal viands and associates gay arm gains the skis nor shun the person gay but with blue checks and with discordant hair meet its rough brief and peep for prime rose pale or lurking violet and hedges bare and through long evenings from our last claim the thrift of stinted grade and sullen flame sonnet eighty six pride of learned sea and circle bound rival of all britannia's natives boast magnificent kellerani from the coast the mountains rise with noble woods embrowned to ten voices echoes send the cannon sound and thunders bursting the waste rocks around till startled wonder and delight exhaust and countless repercussions Iceless and boast upon the liquid glass, a bloomy whale saw was at Artebutus, yet not for we, so kneeling wakes or local ecstasy, as o'er a narrow, barren, silent dale, where deeply sleeps rude circling rocks among, a lofty watered fount, and armored petrarch sun. Sonnet eighty seven. Rome cleans brown the delphic laurel twine, and lo, her laurel decks Amanda's breast charm shall her mark its glossy branches shine on the contrasting snow shall see expressed laughs by the arms and the green hues dressed of a selected foliage nymph tis fine the warning story on its leaves to find proud deafness fade imprisoned in its rind and with its ambushed way great fibrous power scorning and bend the feet of wind to foil his swift pursuit till on tasling shore shot into boards and rooted to the soil was wont, fair maid, Apollo's heir to shun, soon may his prayed, and what will your lot be one? Sonnet 88 Up this bleak hill, and wintry night's dread hour, with mine congenial to the scene, I come, to see my valley in the lunar gloom, to see it whelmed amid the cloudy hour, gleams the cold moon, and shows the ruthless power on yon swalling floods, that white with turbid foam roll over the fields, and billow as we roam against the bushes beat the way no more a troubled sea tossed by furious wind alas the wild and angry waves efface pathway and hatch and bank and style i find but one white waste of waters controlled was drier to tides of misery and disgrace love opens the floodgates of my struggling soul sonnet eighty nine yon late but gleaming moon and how a light shines out unveiled and on the cloud stark fleece rests 
but the strengthened beams appear to increase. The wild disorder of a troubled night, redoubling echoes seem yet more to excite. The roaring winds and waters are by cheese resolves, but promised everlasting peace, and drew my steps to this encumbered height. I wish I shudder, strength my longing arms of a step cliff. My swelling spirits brave the leap that quiets all these dire alarms, and flounce my tossing with a stormy wave. But oh, what roots my feet, what spells, what charms the daring purpose of my soul enslave. Sonnet 90 My hour is not yet come. His burning eyes have not yet locked their last. Else that roar of his wild storm, what gloom joy to poor my fret, exhaling so. Sublime to rise, rend the conflict's clothes, inflame the skis, and lash the torrents. Bending to explore or evening seat, my straining eye, once more, roofs a wide rate we waste. But not is Christ safe a pale flood, overwhelming as its trace. Yet, oh, lest my remorseless fate decree, but all I love with life's extinguished race, sink from my soul to soothe's agony, to balm that life whose loss may forfeit we. Come, dear remembrance of departed days. Sonnet 91 On the fleet streams, the sun that later rose, and ember radiance play, the tall young grass, no foot half bruised, came morning as I pass, breathes the poor gale that on the blossom blows, and, as with gold, yon green hills so it glows, a lake inlays the veil with molten glass. Now is the year's soft youth, yet me, alas, she is not as it was wont, Impending woes waits on my heart. But joys, what once were mine, spring leads not back, and those that yet remain fade while she blooms. Each hour more lovely shine, her crystal beams, and feed her fall train. While I have pale and wedding fires, decline those eyes whose light my filial hopes sustain. Sonnet 92 Behold the tree, an autumn's dying decay, stripped by the frequent chill and edging wind. Where yet some yellow, lonely leaves we find, lingering and trembling on the naked spray, twenty, perchance for millions while away. Emblem, alas, to just, of humankind, vain man expects long vitality, designed for few indeed. And their protracted day, what is it worth when wisdom does not scorn? The blasts of sickness, care and grief pale, that laid with friends in dust, whose natal morn rose near their own. And solemn is the call, yet like those weak, deserted leaves forlorn, shivering where cling to life and fear to fall. Sonnet 93 Yon soft star, peering over the sable cloak, sheets its green luster through the darksome air. Happily in that mild planet's crystal sphere, live the freed spirits, or whose time is showed, swelled my lone sights, my tearful sorrow flowed. Way of his long regrets, perhaps aware, view them with pitying smiles. Or when I ever your guardian cares may be won my bestow. For the pure friendship of your youthful days, ere yet he has soared from earth, illume my heart, a rose beloved in dejection's night, and lead it back to peace. As snow ye dart from their pellucid mansion, the kind race, a true misleading darkness streams so bright. Sonnet 94 all is not right with him, who ill sustained with triumph's silent hours. Himself he flies, perchance from that inspired equipose, which always with a hapless mind remains, but feels no native bias, never gains one energy of will that does not rise from some external cause, which he hides from his own blanket inanity. When he reigns with a strong, cartered mind, who switched hate to common with himself, and vulgar tales of some lost joy, or dreaded stroke of fate, he struggles to escape, or sends with dreads on secret guilt towards God or man with white fries dire, the self-exceeding flight impeels. Sonnet 95 On the damp margin of a sea beat shore, lonely at eve to wander, or reclined bend of a rock, or time the rising wind mourns over the waters, and the solemn roar vase billows into heaven's sovereign pool. And back we see it alternate, while combined loud shriek the sea folds, harboring us assigned, clamorous and fearful of a stormy hour. To listen with deep thought those awful sounds, gaze on the boiling, the tumultuous waste, or promontory root, or craggy moans, staying the furious main, delight has cast on my rapid spirit and my thrilling heart, near as the softer joys green whales impart. Sonnet 96 
the breathing freshness of a shining morn, whose beams glance yellow on the distant fields, as sweet unutterable pleasure yields to my dejection sense, returns with scorn on the light joys of this patient born. Scared remembrance on her bosom shields, against each glittering glance she gales whilst, wearing the fond regrets, the silent morn, the heart's dear comfort lost. But nature, though, though art resistless still, and yet are we in the present balmy gates and vernal blow to memory own the magic of a scene, for which such fragrant breath, such ambient rays, shone the soft mornings of my youthful days. Sonnet 97 Woe silent door of our eternal sleep, sickness and pain, debility and woes, all the dire trains of ill's existence knows, O shuttest out for ever. Why when we weep this fixed tranquillity, so long, so deep, in a dear father's clay coat form? The rose no energy and living health bestows through many a tedious year, but used to creep in languid deprivation of the flame of intellect resplendent once confessed, dark and more dark each passing day became. Now that angelic lights the soul invest, come let me yield to thee a joyless frame or silent door of everlasting rest. Sonnet 98 Since my grieved mind some energy regains, intrudious habits can at times repress the weight of final woe, the deep distress of lifelong separation, yet its pains, of to the throb along with feathered veins. My rest has lost its balm, the found caress worn to dear, aged forehead to impress at midnight as he slept. Nor now obtains my uprising the blessed news, but counterpart joy to the morning when its dawn had brought some health to a weak frame, or which my heart, the fearful fondness, yield an anxious thought. Time and the hope that wraps the mortal dart of its fell sting should cheer me as we ought. Sonnet 99 Remorseless winter, and my iron region comes with loud violent on the pinion born. A long, long night, the tardy leaden morn, the grey frost, rivaling lane and hill and plain, chill silent snows and heavy, blattering rain. These are the known alleys, and life forlorn, yet patient, droops, nor breathes, repining sway. But now, usurper, and has made it torn, for summer's hand has stores of angry sway. His wetting thunders with the winds unite, and the pale snows with livid lightness play. The poor of a dreadful splendors over his night, to poise the pleasures of his golden day, soft gales, blue skis, and long protracted light. Sonnet 100 The liar of a sonnet has full many a time, amused my lassitude and soothed my pains, and graver cares forbade the lengthened strains to the brief bound and oft reunite chime a long farewell. The splendid forms of rhyme and grief and lonely orphanism's reigns oppress the dropping soul. Death's dark domains from mournful shadows of the unknown incline, for in their silent born my filial bands lie all dissolved and swiftly wasting poor from a frail glass of life. Heave sparkling sense, sleep then, my lyre, the tuneful task are over, sleep. For my heart, a breathed and restless head, wake me rapt touch, my glowing strings no more.